Does this unit reshape the meta? It's too early to really say, but we can make some good guesses. Let's see how she performs in different modes. And first off, we have to summon because, you know, you have to get the unit first. <laughs> let's let's grab this free pull quick and see if we can't pull, you know, the other Lind. <laughs> um, I've said before, but I I love this unit. Lind, um, I <laughs> the 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 original one was my first five star. And I still have a special place in my heart for that one. But we should get going. Obviously, oh, that's a nice circle. That is a fantastic way to start. <sighs> All right, what this is gonna come down to is how well this unit performs in combat, to be completely honest with you. The the extra stuff is really good. <laughs> uh, no follow-up is fantastic. Even, and I keep hearing, yes, but so many units get no follow-up in their weapons. So many units get half no follow-up in their weapons. There are many, many cases where I have a unit that would have survived if they would have had full no follow-up and hadn't had that nasty auto, <laughs> auto double that so many, so many of those armors get. But anyway, we would also love a Nino because I mean, first off, this is a fantastic unit. Second off, if we don't end up using this unit, this is amazing fodder, absolutely phenomenal. And then, I'm still not sure about Remote Sparrow, but you know what? We'll have to test the unit out when we get one. Oh, we're getting red. Ah, I love this. All the reds, bring them on. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Hello. That is, that is amazing. So we're, we're just fine. We would like to get one Lind on the way, but I definitely wanted a Nino as well. That is fantastic. I am I am super excited about this. I, I have some plans for that unit on defense that I, I think are going to be fun. Uh, the, the ignores terrain thing, I believe is better on infantry units than on cavalry. And I, I guess not considering summoner duels. I think in summoner duels, it's, it's the uh, the other way around. Um, just because of, hey, it's Fina. Uh, just because of how, <laughs> how common the trenches are in summoner duels and how much threat range is a factor. But in Aether Raids, I think it's reversed. And I think the... I think the infantry units, uh, on infantry units, it's more powerful. So, and I guess obviously on flyers and, uh, and armors, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I think we should probably get started with questions and the big thing here, we need to answer this one first. This is from Flair, and it says, I'm confused on why you gave the new Lind a point for arena usability. <laughs> Harmonized heroes don't get the built-in duel, so as a ranged cap, she, the she theoretically tanks your score. I don't, I don't know what happened to my brain at that moment. <laughs> I, the concept of a cav that ignores trenches that Erica is just so amazing and so scary in arena that I lost my mind and immediately started fearing instead of, you know, remembering that in uh, harmonic heroes don't get that dual dual clause. So I was completely wrong on that. Don't use this unit in arena unless you are just an absolute. Yes. What is this summoning session? Thank you, Flair. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Uh, we would love a plus one Lind, which is why we're going all the way to the spark, but 
I mean, if if you folks want to give me a Nino as well, <laughs> I'm all about that. <laughs> um, this also helps my resonant battles. I don't actually have an Arcanea unit with a merge, so uh, that, that, that hurts my score in resonant battles. But anyway, again, this unit in... This unit in Arena is terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. <laughs> so I guess we'll see. We might see a couple of them pop up on her bonus season, but long term, we're not going to see a ton of ton of her. But we need to move on to our next question, which is from one of our scripters, FJ. With the advent of Bridal Catria 2.0, which heroes would you like to see a newer version of? That's a fantastic question. And my gut response is I want a different Winter Bernie. <laughs> I've gone so long without having her that I just I can't spend orbs because I feel like the next Winter Bernie is just around the corner. And, and so far, they've kept that kind of locked behind just that unit. But the, the Vantage strats and the Gale Force strats just absolutely love her. And I, I love both of those <laughs> and so would like to use them. Um, I'm not, I'm not uh, so much worried about Gale Force. I think there are so many ways to get down into... Wings of Mercy range that I, I'm just, I'm less concerned with that. And for the most part, I'd rather have another unit that got another action. But for Vantage, <laughs> there are tons of shenanigans that you can get into. But yeah, I just, I don't have that unit and I don't want to summon for her because there are so many things we have to summon for right now. I, and there's most likely this next banner that's coming up is an engage banner. And that's terrifying to my orb stash. Seriously, I, oh shoot, um, Ursula is green, okay. I blanked for a second there. <laughs> uh, Ursula who has great fodder and looks like a pretty great unit, but yeah. So anyway, thank you, FJ, for the question. And uh, let's see the next one. Oh my gosh, this is a long one. Okay. Many of us are anticipating a day of reckoning for the dragon meta. I love this. This is so dramatic. <laughs> but most premium dragon slayers, such as legendary Ju Julia, legendary Deirdre, Deirdre. I can get her name right, I swear. Deirdre, Deirdre, Deirdre aren't common enough outside their designated mode season to pull that off. What sort of unit do you envision IS printing that generally impacts the overall viability of dragons? The, the thing that really affects the meta are your core units for the individual modes. So in an arena, Legendaries. In Aether Raids, come on now. In Aether Raids, you've got Mythics, and in Summoner Duels, you've got Duo Heroes. So you would need one of those for each individual mode that would. Oh, hello. I actually have a copy of Hilda, and now I get to plus one her because my other one has terrible IVs. I don't remember what they were, but they were absolutely horrendous. Okay, so in if you think about what brought the end of the dragon meta, the main mode for this game is Aether Rays. Like that is that is kind of the the thing that everything is built around. Um, I think we already have dragon effectiveness in Arena, and I don't think you see dragons just a ton there. But uh, Aether Raids, the thing that brought the end to the dragon meta was Thracier. And so that was your, your mythic that you were going to use had dragon effectiveness. 
Um, even if you think about dragons in anima season, because of Naga, they aren't used a whole lot there. But we would essentially we would need another Thracer, and that would end Aether Raid's viability. Uh, and obviously for Summoner Duels, which I I don't see them a ton. Every time she shows up, every time she shows up, I'm like, Legendary Shes, what are you doing here? Uh, <laughs> wishful thinking on my part. I or I'm just blind. But but that would be the big thing if they released another Thracer, something with dragon effectiveness that just whomped things. Or or if Thracer's refine is bonkers. That could it won't completely stop it cuz folks honestly like to use new units. They don't they don't love to use older stuff. If if we saw Thracer get a just ridiculous refine, it is it is it would definitely hinder. <laughs> but uh yeah. I don't think they're going to do that. I think they learned their lesson. They they were too heavy-handed with Thracer and she just absolutely erased units from the meta. And I I don't think that was a good thing for the game and I I, I mean, despite what we say, I think IS, I think the folks there are pretty smart and we nice. We sometimes neglect how complicated balancing a game like this is, because I got to tell you, this game is ridiculously complicated. And for the most part, they do a good job. Um, there are some definitely things that we could point out that they <laughs> didn't do so well with. But, you know, that's... <laughs> I think for the most part, they've created a successful gotcha game that has lasted. Um, I mean, we're... <laughs> How far along are we? Uh, we're, we're five years coming up on the six-year anniversary. Like, they, they've done a good job. Six years coming... Oh, gosh, I can't even remember. <laughs> 2018. I yeah. I that feels like so long ago. Anyway, <laughs> um, I don't think they're going to nerf dragons completely. I could be wrong, but it would take it would take a Thracer level mythic, and really defense mythic is what you'd be looking for. So that was a very long answer to that question. Thank you, False Sense. I I am um, I enjoyed the writing of that question as much as the question itself. All right. Coming up on the spark, like we started real strong. Um, if we could end this with a nice focus unit, red focus unit to be exact, either one I would be just fine with. Wait, three, 3.5? Oh, 3.5 isn't bad at all. <laughs> uh, so from Sacred Twins Duo, who always has good questions, how do you think the engaged units will work when they are added? Do you think it will be like TMS units with emblems as a look feature, or do you think this will make alts for characters like Marth a rearmed unit? There's a lot of theorization on this. Um, there's a couple different paths they could go. I believe that they will have different alts because it means they can make more units. And I, we talk about a lot, The this game is driven by its IP. Uh, folks play this because they've loved the Fire Emblem franchise and they want to come in, they want to play with their favorite units. Having d different ways to get those units in the game is fantastic. So that is one thing they could do. Another is to make an entirely different type of hero. How interesting would it be if you would summon separately for the unit and its pair up? <laughs> so it would bring more customization as well these engaged heroes would they would be I, I guess more of a blank slate and I probably have a decent PRF something like that and then depending on if you added Marth to them or Micaiah to them it would give them different skills so essentially the one of the things that they've been talking about so much for so long is adding an additional slot and so I, I think that is fascinating I, I absolutely love that idea. And of course, the other way is to add them in as duos, uh, which I, which would be just fine as well. Um, I, I think that's that's a fun thing. So 
all different ways. I think they'll do it separately, but I kind of love the engage slot idea. <laughs> so yeah, things to think about. Hello, hello, Faye. All right, we've got two summons left and we're, I mean, we're 3.75. I would, I would love to pull like a, a plus two Lind or a plus one Nino, either one, either one. <laughs> they said no. <laughs> and come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We got smoke, we got smoke. No. <laughs> Just the Sylvia. I Sylvia, we love you. You're you're fantastic. All right. There are so many things to summon for. And we need to do a showcase and we've got lots of stuff to do. So, I'm going to exert some self-control. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll stop there. <laughs> but I'm begging you. Stay tuned. I'll be back shortly and we'll talk about different ways that I initially see us using this. And hopefully you guys will have better ideas in the comments and we'll leave them below. But I'd love to know how did your summons go? I Leave a comment, guys. I, I always want to know how everyone did. All right, summoners, let's take a look at this. Now, I, I want you to keep something in mind. I, As Faytubers, sometimes we overhype units. And the reason is, I mean, we get really excited about new toys. Um, as you're looking through these, the way you should be watching this is wondering, how does this add to my current barracks? And does this bring something that I don't already have? When you think of have, though, think of, does this get me more wins? <laughs> Or do I have more fun with it? That is perfectly uh, that is perfectly fine as well. Uh, but I wanted to go through a couple concepts here, and the first one is this thing. Uh, this is a hybrid cav line with Nino, who I think is a fantastic unit, and I've got set up as a, uh, a, a uh, <laughs> AOE specialist here. Now, the the way this is set up here, you can see Embla is set precariously over this spot, and we're trying to make sure that no one uses saves over this portion. And then over here, we have Lind all by our lonesome. <laughs> so uh, the nice thing here is we're going to give these two units free reign over the trees. And of course, Nino already has it. Uh, the nice thing about this map, you're, you're wanting to create some sort of advantage that your opponent doesn't have. Your opponent most likely won't have that ability to get through trees, whereas you will unless they use Nino. <laughs> I guess that's a very real possibility. Uh, normally for these types of units though, we don't see just a whole lot of them in the meta, so keep that in mind. All right. Generally the way you're gonna see this is unit setting up here and trying to keep out of the way of uh, the good old emblem block, block there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and swap. I'd really like you here and you there. All right. So, break block, dance. We're not feuded. There we go. Uh, let's make sure combat animations are on and let's see how this works. So this is similar to something I'm running in Astra right now. And you can see the nice setup for Pathfinder there. Asker gets the extra cooldown from Note as well as from himself. And I mean, you can see this, this unit is just beefy. <laughs> but the ability to go through trees on that is just spectacular. Um, Nino comes in, finishes this unit off. Uh, there, there's a lot of range there, a lot of great things happening. But you can see it, it's, it's limiting the number of choices the opponent has on, on where they sit. Uh, the thing about AoEs and the reason we stopped using them is because saves become so prevalent, you could position your save away from where the area of effect special hit. With Embla, we kind of changed the game there and things are a bit different. But I, this is this is one concept. This is nowhere near a finished defense. Please don't copy this. Uh, but this is just something that you, uh, you both need to watch out for and something you can design with if you'd like. The... 
the big issue and the, the thing I'm finding, I, I wish this unit hit harder. Uh, this isn't a very good version of this unit. For instance, I, I don't know why this unit doesn't have Blade Session right there. Uh, and also, she really needs a speed boon. Like that, that's, that is, if you're using this unit, you really, really want that speed boon. But this is still really interesting and something you can try out. I, I think it's really fun. I don't think it's going to shift anything in Aether Raids, but it does give you an extra toy. All right, next up, we want to look at some Summoner Duels fun. And it, it, what we talked about here was the trenches and how IS really uses those to try to pin down and, and limit calves. Uh, now, what I'm about to show you, this is purely, purely proof of concept. On this particular map, you'd probably want to wait turn one and then strike turn two and, and be set up for that. And in case they do overextend, you can take them out. But otherwise, anyway, for the proof of concept, I just went all out. <laughs> so you can see we've given the uh, ignores terrain all around the board. And this is a fun team. Keep in mind that these, that these folks are just having fun. Like they don't have, even have reposition, but it, it shows you the range of what this type of unit can do. So, and we've got to showcase how much fun Altina is too right now. The, these are these are two very good units. So, we start out and immediately get Seleft where he is threatening this entire block here. Uh, it, it limits very much what the opponent can do. Um, again, I probably the best thing to do here would be to sit back and allow the rest of your team to set up under the cover of Seleph, but yeah. <laughs> We're not about that life. <laughs> Charge forth. Um, the reason in case you're wondering that you have both Seleph and Nana uh, is that you have two different types of units that those two can kill. Uh, obviously Nana is there for any, any near save. And the fact that she can limit Pavis is pretty neat. And yeah, and, and you can see this this sets up nicely where it is very difficult for this this team to do anything anymore and they just surrender. Now, what I want to point out and I going through this, I, I, I mean, this was all pretty quick. I, I do want to note that I was probably about 50 50 on this. And again, this is not a good team, but I do want to show Krem here and he had and he has a very interesting team is all based on AOEs. Like this is, this is very common right now and it is neat to do with Asker. But I wanna point out the use of Duo Thor and how much she shuts this down. But the important thing here, and we'll pause it right there. There are a couple things that happened. The biggest is this baited the enemy team out into using Thor early. That is huge. So the proper thing to do here is to back off and then use Pathfinder next turn, which they can't stop. But again, we're doing proof of concept and this is first time out, so we want to boldly go. <laughs> so we're just going to push blindly forward, smack Seleph in there and go for things. <laughs> now, the big problem with Thor, of course, is how she blocks. There we go. Got her out of the way, but uh, she does stump Seleph, and that is an issue. If you were setting this up properly, you'd have a unit that wasn't Lind that had lower speed. And so you could you could back that unit off somewhere and that wouldn't be an issue. Um, it, again, in this case, we're just we're just barreling through. <laughs> but it is it's interesting to note all of the different things that this unit affects. I think whether this unit changes summoner duels depends more on the map. This isn't like like Thor. That with, with Thor, it is that unit is good. Period. Doesn't matter where you're using it. That that unit is so amazing that you you want her on your team in all cases. All right. The last thing to look at is an arena, and we talked about this, but this is not particularly a good arena unit. <laughs> so keep that in mind, but. We could see more of these effects in the future, and you could run into a unit like this. So I, I just keep that in mind and keep in mind all of the crazy things that can happen 
when you don't have to have when you don't have to worry about trenches. Now that is now a viable spot that I can go through. We got the massive debuff from Aversa, which is always exciting. <laughs> um, can't take down Edelgard, although I mean, not many can. You could though. Ah. Uh, now that's, see, that's interesting. And that's actually something we'll take. So you can see we, we scoot right past there. And we talked about it, this unit still hits hard. She just doesn't have elite damage. And I'm not in love with these with these particular uh, uh, spots because they, um, with these particular maps because they don't really showcase how you can get around trenches and how often they are used now. But you guys get the idea. <laughs> oh man, a verse is gonna come barreling down on us. I hate that. But what if we just used a handy duo skill? Or what if we remembered that we had like seven of them? <laughs> um. Quite the invitation. Is the time. Yeah, summoners. That's just <laughs> fun stuff. So, anyway, will this unit be a pain in the butt in arena? No. But watch out for these skills later. Uh, if they put this on a legendary, I think things get very interesting. So the big question, what's our final takeaway on this unit? And looking back at the tier list, and these are always living and growing things. I, I appreciate all input you guys give me in the comments. This one, I believe, is more in the range of that tier one. And I, if you remember, I originally had them in the, the meta tier. And that's, I think that was a bit of an overreaction. I just, she does not put out the type of damage that Veronica and and Duochrome do. Uh, so I that bottom of tier one, I think is really nice. I, she has a lot of things about her that are amazing. And she has a couple it factor things as well. Uh, moving down, uh, it, this is really the key here. And I think this is the more important slide to look at. And this is supports. I do think this unit is a nice tier one support because you get both the... <laughs> You get both the ignores terrain and null follow up passively. That is phenomenal. Um, along with the different things, the breath effect and the resonant blades that she can give uh, units from the same game. I think that alone puts her in tier one. You notice I've got her at the bottom of tier one here. I don't think she's an Asker level or a Sather level uh, unit here, but I think she's good. Does that put her in a must summon category? Uh, unless a unit is meta <laughs> uh, or they bring something specific to your teams. Like if you are a huge Brave Sella fan in Summoner Duels, I think this is a must summon if that is part of your core team. Uh, if you are looking to mix things up in light season, I think this is a fun summon, but not a must. And obviously for Arena, that's just not, <laughs> this is not that unit. Uh, but yeah, Summoners, I hope this helps. Take care and schedule an appointment with your fail just real soon.